Hello learners, welcome to the DLED program of environmental studies. I am Professor Manju Jain, former head department of elementary education NCRT. Today I am going to discuss a topic assessment and evaluation in environmental studies that is along with learning centered assessment. So the focus of the present session would be what we mean by assessment and evaluation, what are the misconceptions related to assessment and evaluation, what are learning centered assessment. Learning centered assessment we will discuss here the self and the peer assessment, project work and anecdotal records. We will also discuss with you the role of teachers or practitioner in using these assessment practices in the classroom. So what we generally practitioners may not be very clear sometime what we mean by the assessment and what we mean by evaluation. How these two processes should be used in EVS classroom for assessing and for reporting child progress. So continuous assessment or formative assessment uh, is reporting in every quarter takes in a weekly test is a misconception. The purpose of continuous assessment is not for the reporting purpose. The comprehensive assessment also done in a segregated manner is also not serving the purpose of summative kind of assessment or assessment of learning. It should be holistic in nature. The personal social qualities of children that are assessed on a three point scale or five point scale or many a time on a nine point scale should not be done in a way. It is again a very related uh, misconception sort of thinking in the primary classrooms. Assessment and evaluation most of the time are being used as interchangeably processes or interchangeably uh, assessing and reporting practices. So this is not the case. How they are different we will see here. Under continuous and comprehensive evaluation it is understood that teacher need to record each and child progress daily. It the implication and the understanding of the teacher is they are thinking they need to record each and every activity of the child at in every classroom and for every purpose. No, this is not under CC it's a, it's a misunderstanding how to record the child's progress and what should be recorded is very important caution for the teacher. Every child needs to be promoted whether he or she learns or not. This is again a misconception for the practitioner or for different stakeholders that the child must be learn in the classroom so that the situation does not arrive whether they will attain the progress or not. The purpose of evaluation is not labeling and comparing performance of children against each other. The purpose is not just the X child has learned much better than the Y because we know no two, two individual alike. Children are learning at their own pace. So its purpose is not comparing or labeling. We have seen in many classroom in EVS teacher are making groups and the fast learner and the slow learner the purpose for the teacher, they must know what is the, who are the children lagging behind, but it should not be reported in the classroom in front of children. So the CC is also misunderstood as the sole responsibility of a teacher, while it is not the case. CC is that 
notion which is the responsibility of all stakeholders all stakeholders the partner in the improving the child's learning it may be the parents also the other authorities may the practitioners and the other person who are directly or indirectly involved in the learning process so what is the purpose of assessment and evaluation the primary purpose of assessment and evaluation is to improve children's learning to help them progress leading to their overall development the purpose of assessment is judging the quality of performance of children while learning is going on so the assessment is mainly responsible for the child's learning is for the improvement purpose while evaluation focuses on the actual level attained by the children so the value judgment purpose is for the evaluation while the assessment basically assessment for learning when we are using assessment for the improvement of learning its the purpose is not for reporting so overall purpose of assessment and evaluation is for improving child's learning this is the main purpose of assessment and evaluation helping children to their holistic development because we are we believe that we should provide quality primary education to all children irrespective of their caste creed or location or any context so the holistic development could be done so the purpose of using these assessment and evaluation is to develop their full potential helping children to determine their child's strength the child's strength by identifying sometimes the hidden potential are there so with these techniques with these tools teacher could able to know these are some of the strength of these children it helps a lot for the teacher to design and devise the learning process the reflecting children's progress based on identified criteria in a simple manner these tools are also helping a teacher to identify the criteria of assessment how to record the progress of the children based on these criteria and also help to make the report in a more comprehensive manner again we can say assessment is a if we can see the difference then assessment is a means of gathering of evidences when we would like to collect the information about the child we can collect information by assessing a child if the child is learning at the learning seat or the learning phase it will give evidences to the teacher what a child can do what activities he could not able to do what are the communication skills which we should develop what are the values he should inculcate so such things teacher will get only through the assessment process so it gives the evidences for learning assessment does not speak the final judgment certainly assessment for learning does not speak the final judgment but a purpose through which the comparison among various sets of observation are made the assessment help a teacher to compare the child one child progress over a period of time it gives maybe the child learn some concept in a july now what is the progress of a child in a september so it gives the child's uh, learning curve whether they are learning at their own pace and what is the progress of a child of a each child evaluation while on the other hand refers to judge the quality of children's work on established criteria and assessing value grade and level 
So, the purpose of evaluation is basically value judgment. Purpose of evaluation is to provide judgment. The child is that level, the child is the A level child. A level child means the evaluation of a child is he is doing as per the criteria, he is learning as per the requirement of the EVS uh, concepts which he has or she has learned. Thus, the purpose of evaluation is not labeling, labeling the child, the labeling of fast learner, the labeling of slow learner. So, here it is a certainly a value judgment, but value judgment in terms of each child. What is the progress of Rohit? What is the progress of Mohit? Not the comparing of the progress of Rohit and Mohit. It is also comparing children progress in a terms we can say the purpose is not comparing, the purpose is not labeling and also purpose of evaluation is not point out the weaknesses. If we can see the process of learning, if we would like to understand how the evaluation and assessment is going on in the class. We can say the process of assessment is going on in the class, the teacher first in the beginning during the planning process, she identified what are the concepts and what are the learning outcomes which she should able to achieve. After identifying the learning, expected learning, she is creating a learning environment because the learning environment is prerequisite for learning. Without learning environment, she cannot achieve the expectation which she is expecting. So, the second important prerequisite is creating learning environment. And the third important steps of the process of identifying the assessment in the classroom is the initial level of the children. What are the entry level of the children? What is they know? which topic she is initiating in the class. Say for example, a theme food is she is undertaking in the class, in a class food. She must be very clear what things she should know to link the new concept. Similarly, after identifying or linking with the previous knowledge, she accordingly she will design and devise the teaching learning process in which the assessment should be inbuilt in a way to want it to know what they have, what is the process of their learning. After this, she would like to know the process of learning is going on and she then wanted to know what they have learned, then she should apply the assessment of learning so that she can meaningfully judge the value judgment of the child that is for the reporting purpose. Now, if we are very clear about what we really mean by the assessment and what we mean by the evaluation and what is the role of evaluation in this learning process. Now, we will discuss some of the learning centered assessment in EVS classrooms. So, why we have the learning based assessment? Learning based assessment provides evidences of learning. And learning indicators and learning outcomes, it helps to identify. Similarly, it helps to meet out the expectations of EVS learning that are the objectives identified for EVS. Why learning based assessment? It helps to assess all aspects rather than merely knowledge. Assess different dimensions of child's behavior that is the holistic different cognitive, affective and psychomotor particularly to assessing learning based assessment. It helps in assessment using ways through which children learn such as the self assessment, peer assessment and through project work. So, we will discuss here some of the three approaches which EVS teacher use in the class. Learning centered assessment, I have already discussed the self assessment, peer assessment, assessment through projects and anecdotal 
records. So assessment as learning as we have already discussed in the formative and summative assessment. Assessment as learning occurs when students are own assessor. They are the monitor of their own learning. It reflects on own progress of learning and know how to use assessment for improvement. It also helps to know how to use assessment for the new learning to frame questions and take responsibility for their own learning. So some of the examples we will discuss that the self-assessment, peer assessment, peer feedback as well as asking or framing questions. Now another challenge which is being faced by the teachers in the classroom, how to use reflection as a process of assessment. So reflection as a process, it is the ability to reflect on one's action so as to engage in process in a continuous learning. So basically the reason and the we can say the assessment why a reflection or reflective process should be used by the teacher. What are the benefits of reflection? So it helps learn from own experiences. It learn from other experiences. It's benefit for the teacher and for the children. It's objectivity, keeping objectivity in assessment. So objectivity and assessment improves a lot in the classrooms by using reflective processes, a scope for further improvement. So in an EVS classroom, if a teacher is using reflection or reflective process as an assessment tool, that would certainly improve the quality of learning. So assessment as learning further, we can say the process of reflection used by the teacher basically for the self-reflection by children, reflection by peer group and Teacher own reflection is also a process through which child's or teacher's teaching learning could be improved. Variety of situation are there and broadly the assessment kind of reflection which is a process as well as the product part of the teaching learning process. So reflection in action means when teacher is using reflection as a process. It means when the this process is the learning is going on and when teacher is giving reflection or feedback to the children, we can say reflection in action in the classroom. If the child is doing activity and while doing the activity in a group work, teacher is observing or she is giving opportunity to the children to to just evaluate or just give feedback to each other. That kind of activity give more opportunity for the reflection purpose. Similarly, second kind of reflection is the reflection on action. Reflection on action, that process is used by the teacher when she wanted to record the what the child has attained what they have learned. So after the completion of the task, if the reflection is used, it is used for the reporting purpose. Here the purpose is not just using it as a one of the activities, but the, here the reflection purpose is to just report the child in terms of the strength in terms of the weaknesses. So again we can say the reflection as a process which is used by the teacher to preparing children for learning to learn. Now what is the again the self-assessment in terms of learning centered assessment. When children are act as assessor of one's learning, when children assesses and reflect peer work and such assessment is called as assessment as learning. Self-assessment, peer assessment and peer feedback 
reflection on teacher's work is that some of the examples of assessment is learning. So, how self-assessment and peer assessment should be done? These should be done when a teacher asks question to observe own activity or task in terms of what mistakes they have made, what are the good points of their work and teacher then provide guidance for improvement to each child or maybe to the group as per the need of the classroom. Peer assessment again we can say when teacher assigns task or activity to children for example draw a map of school and ask children to assess or reflect on their counterpart or their peer work. Then when children assess peer work in terms of what are the good points of the activity which they have done that is the map which they have drawn maybe of the school premises, maybe of the society community or maybe any task related to mapping skill. And the peer also identified what are the gaps, not only the good points but what are the gaps and what can be done to improve these gaps. Such kind of process is based is called the learning based assessment. So, what are the benefits of self and peer assessment? This self assessment and peer assessment helps to know how to use assessment for improvement. It helps to know how to use assessment for new learning. The purpose is to prepare for learning to learn. So, its purpose is also not only for improvement but also preparing a child for the new learning. It helps to ask questions and frame questions. Help, it also helps to develop the critical thinking. It gives more and more opportunity to the children to identify information on their own, to draft questions based on whatever ideas are coming. So, the EVS learning purpose is not just identifying right and wrong answer. The EVS learning is focusing on to providing opportunity to all children to express their own ideas in a more confident manner and prepare them for learning to learn. Now, assessment through project is again a learning based assessment. So, the project work is one of the modes of learning. Project may be individual or it could be the group work like some of the individual project which children are doing in the class like developing herbarium, collection of pictures, maybe the plants, variety of animals, so many pictures or maybe the in a concrete form these are some of the individual projects are being doing in the primary classrooms. So, project may be small group work, individual work or may be sometimes a large group work. So, say small group activity may be done by 5 or 6 children and if the whole class is involved say for example, organizing exhibition in the classroom it is a kind of big project. So, project work may be the whole class project organization mela, maybe the EVS mela or any kind of mela or displaying or organizing some setting up of some classrooms, the such kind of work may be used by the as a large group activity. So, how to assess the group work project? Assessment of assigned work to the members, what was the assignment? that should be the one frame of reference, then the criteria of assessment, how to assess the task which is given to the group, then the developing rubrics to maintain objectivity, identifying learning objectives which was planned that should be fulfilled after completing the activity. Again how to assess group work may be assessment of processes followed by the children because we know 
it's a, we are discussing this is a process based learning based assessment it is not the outcome based assessment so assessment to approach to resolve different opinions if the children are doing in a group work we should also focus how they have resolved the difference of opinion this is again a parameter to assessing the group work initiatives and responsibility of each member the work assigned to them that should be again a frame of reference and the qualitative assessment with suggestion such type of assessment should not be in a 3 point or 5 point but it should be done through the rubrics so that the criteria should be common to all assessment of individual projects because we have seen the project could be the individual group and large group work so some of the example of the individual product the child is using for the developing the protection of the environment we are generally giving tasks to the children in evs classroom make a friend free as a friend so if the task is she is doing and that this is the project she is undertaken then the frame of reference is the what is the selection of a tree what activity she is doing to make the tree as a friend what are the regularity of doing activities with making tree as a friend so example making tree as a friend what could be the reference point identification of products of plant whether she is able to do concern shown for care of the plant or plants if she is selected two or three plants sensitivity towards protection of the plants what kind of activity she is doing or undertaking qualitative assessment with suggestion if she has done activity or she has completed the activity we know we have already discussed these are some of the recording processes which teacher must use if she is using the learning centered assessment now the third way which we will use are anecdotes so what are the anecdotes basically we use anecdotes used to record specific observation of students behavior skill their attitude as they are related to the outcomes in the environmental studies such records provide cumulative information on children over a period of time it's a cumulative record of the children and these should be very brief focused and objectively written so the records development of children over a period of time should be the focus should be the concern provide a basis for ongoing records it should not be done maybe the teacher sit and write six months record in a one day it should be done over a period of time and the one of the important characteristics of anecdotes is must capture observation that might be over cited by the teacher during the teaching learning process some of the very Uh, important strength among the children which not be observed by the teacher during the teaching learning so maybe some in situation she is observed this is the very good strength of the child she must record and report provides ongoing documentation of learning that may be shared with children teachers and parents so some of the examples of anecdotes we have given here how to record the child's behavior which should be reported so anecdotal record is basically for the holistic assessment purpose it is a cumulative recording tool authentic tool to record the hidden potential of children hidden potential which not be easily be sometimes seen by the teacher in a natural classroom situation it's a cumulative record of progress of child over a period of time capture incidences episodes based on some observation of the teacher or maybe the peer group and records interpersonal behavior of children 
So, what is the role of the teacher in this endeavor? So, an important role of the teacher is she must be update her knowledge and information, reporting and assessment tools and techniques. She believe in process of mutual learning, more emphasis on discussion, sharing of experiences, participatory approach she should follow. She must understand participation of activities in the class and participation with teachers peer group as well and focus more on the do how rather than on do know only and build capacity of teachers to use assessment as process. This is the implication for the authorities to make the teachers more professionally prepared to take up this professional development of teachers for the teaching primary children. And the context specific trainings and critical pedagogy is critical for the teachers. So, this is again a implication for the administrators, a more focus on teaching learning process and less focus on recording because a more opportunity time should be given to teachers for the teaching rather than just record keeping exercises. Provide inputs for creating atmosphere for group learning. So, in conclusion, the summing up we can say in this session we have discussed with you what we mean by the assessment and what we mean by evaluation. Are these two interchangeably or what are their role, what are their function, how to use assessment and evaluation in the primary EVS classroom and if we are using assessment learning based assessment then how the anecdotal record projects and the self assessment should be used and how to evaluate the progress of children. Thank you very much.